Good morning. It is Friday and welcome this morning. Thank you for watching. Now we are speaking on the theme moving from fear to fire because this is what God wants to do with these people. He wants to move us from fear to fire. There's a lot of fear in the world. People are afraid of this virus and the media is really blowing this thing up and people are becoming more and more fearful about this virus. But I believe God is moving his people from fear to fire. There's a major shift happening in the heavenlies right now. God is already on the move. Why? Because God's people are praying. They are calling upon the name of the Lord. And whenever we pray, God moves. Could it be that this coming Sunday, the 31st of May, Pentecost Sunday, is going to be a literal Pentecost, like the Passover was a literal Passover this year, where people all over the world were locked down in their homes. Could it be? Well, I think we need to have an expectation. I think we need to wait on the Lord with an expectation. We need to get our hearts ready, get ourselves prepared, because the church needs the fire of God. It's the fire of God that turns the table on the enemy. It's the fire of God that makes the difference in our lives. It is the fire of God that gives us the boldness to preach the gospel. It's the fire of God that gives us the boldness to testify for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the fire of God that gives us the upper hand over the enemy, the principalities and the powers and the rulers of this dark age and the demonic forces. Our battle is not against people. Our battle is against spiritual principalities. That's why we should have the armor of God on and we should know the power of the armor of God. We should know the power of the blood of Jesus the power of the name of Jesus, the power of the word of God. Now in the book of 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 38 to 40, we read the story where Elijah challenged the Baal prophets in a contest to see whose God was the real God. And we know the story where the Baal prophets, they cut themselves and they called upon their God from the morning until the afternoon and nothing happened. And Elijah he mocked them and then he went and he built an altar for the Lord. The altar that consisted of 12 stones, wood, a young bull. And then he also poured out water over that altar. And then he started praying, calling upon the name of the Lord at the evening sacrifice. And we read here in verse 38, Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down from heaven and burnt up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust, even licked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Then Elijah commanded, Cease all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one escape. So the people seized them all, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. Now let us not be deceived as the body of Christ, as the church of the Lord. We are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We are not ignorant of the schemes of the devil. We know that this coronavirus thing is an onslaught, an, an attack from the principalities against the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the principalities are trying to destroy the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they won't succeed because the Lord Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The church is destined for victory. If you belong to Jesus, your future is only getting brighter and brighter. It was the fire that revealed the God of Israel. It was the fire that released the authority of God to kill the prophets of Baal. 
it is the fire of the Holy Ghost that will cast down the principality of fear over South Africa. It will not be a negotiation. It will not be a man that does, that does this. But it will be God who pours out His fire upon His people, upon His church, and through the fire of God, cast down this principality that has come against South Africa. So I want to encourage you today, child of God, don't give up now. But pray. Pray in the Spirit. Pray and call upon the name of the Lord, just like Elijah. And God will pour out His fire. And His fire will set our hearts ablaze. And we will move from fear to fire. Praise God. And I believe we will have a revival that will sweep our nation. So trust the Lord with me for this coming Sunday when we come together in our homes and we call upon the name of the Lord. We pray together and we trust God that He's going to visit us in our homes and pour out His Spirit upon us, upon our children, and we will be on fire for the Lord. Praise God. Now let us pray this morning. But before we do that, I want to ask you today, maybe you have backslidden. It's time to come back to the Lord. Or maybe you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. It is time to surrender your life to Jesus, to repent of your sin and call upon the name of the Lord. Then you will be saved. When we have communion this morning, pray with me and ask the Lord Jesus to be Lord and Savior of your life. Thank you, Father, that we can call upon your name and that you will answer our prayers. As we have communion today, we remember the Lord Jesus who died for us on the cross, who shed his blood for us, who gave his body for us so that we can be forgiven and that we can be healed by his stripes. Thank you now as we have this communion, Lord, that your people are full of expectation, waiting for Holy Spirit to fall like fire in our hearts and to set us a light, a blaze for you in this time. We thank you, Lord, that you are giving your people the victory over this spirit, this principality of fear that has come against this nation. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day today.